Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. Okay, as we look at the week that was, we can see that the three major indices, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and SP 500, pretty much had a blog week. Uh, the NASDAQ and the S&P rose fractionally. The Dow Jones fell just a little bit. We're still up for the year, which is important. We did see four straight weekly gains here for the S&P 500, so 2012, January. I'm getting off to a good start, but again, for the most part, we had lackluster price action this week. As we look at what was some of uh, our major news overseas this week, there are still concerns mounting over Greece's debt. I read a story, uh, it was shared with me yesterday, that even in 2020, they're still going to be at 120% GDP. So. Uh, definitely some major concerns about if there ever be solvency there in Greece. And Fitch continues to downgrade some of the European uh, debt countries. Um, this week as far as corporate news, Apple uh, reported record earnings on their iPad sales. And we had a disappointing fourth quarter GDP, 2.8% instead of the 3.2%. And we also saw that the Fed agreed to keep their rates low all the way through 2014 so um, overall uh, we saw that luck last week but in the big picture January has started off to be good for 2012 now as we move on to next week as we continue on through our earnings push we can see we have Amazon's really a MasterCard or two that really jump at me speaking to the consumer which you know lets us know where the true state of the market may be. Uh, Exxon and, and United States Steel, Baidu could be interesting, but Amazon and Mastercard are two I'll be watching. As far as economic data, we do have ADP and the employment situation here. Uh, we also have consumer confidence on Tuesday, so we do have some big economic uh, releases coming out this week. So uh, we had a lackluster week this week, but I expect to see some volatility moving into uh, the first week here in February. So we are going to begin by looking at the daily chart of the S&P 500. And before I zoom in, I know it's going to be hard for you to see, but this is where we peaked out this week. And I do want to take the time to let you follow our line across here, follow our line across, and see where I drew that line. It goes all the way back here to uh, March of uh, last year um, to where this little peak here and that's basically where we fell back just a little bit uh, right here um, and you can also see uh, even going back further again February is the next swing high that we're looking at from 2009 that matches up with the uh, July uh, swing high so just want to kind of give you a reference of where th those lines are drawn from um, I'll zoom in a little bit here so we can see this beautiful uptrend that the market has been in slowly but surely um, and remember this is our red candle but remember Apple's earning was after the close on Tuesday and look at Wednesday's day right here so just a beautiful market here now the one thing that I said last week is remember just because we're overbought doesn't mean we can't stay overbought and that's basically what we're seeing in our indicators we're overbought but we stayed overbought however we did pause a little bit here and pull back here Thursday and Friday but as we know we do have some catalysts this week um, Amazon as far as uh, MasterCard but really Amazon that's a tech stock that could move the market but our economic catalyst could also move the market so um, our indicators here on the daily are overbought uh, we'll zoom out here let's check out the weekly we'll zoom in a little bit more here 
see how nice these channels are right uh well look at that really just put in a doji here went up hit this uh resistance price level and put in a doji market breathing a little bit before it decides what it wants to do um our weekly indicators are overbought here on stochastic but can go a little bit higher on rsi and macd and we'll go out one more time to uh our monthly to take a look and we get a real good view at how nice the January month really was. Still have some room to go up here on the monthly. So only our daily is overbought on the S&P 500. Now we'll switch over to the NASDAQ, take a look at our tech stocks. And again, you can see what we're watching here is this line up here. And you can see where we're looking at. Um, and I bet you if I took the time to draw this line right here, which I don't have in, but this line here is 23, 28.37. And when I zoom in, we can see that that's basically where our peak was. So the same thing, the March swing high for 2011 is basically where the market pulled back a little bit. But again, look at our indicators, overbought, 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 but that doesn't mean we can't stay overbought. So definitely seeing some nice strong action here on the daily for... Um, the NASDAQ swinging out here to the weekly zooming in a little bit not quite the doji that we saw for the S&P 500 but very nice candle and almost overbought here on the weekly for stochastic but MACD and RSI I said that backwards they're they're fine and we'll go out one more time to the monthly to really get a nice long-term view and we can see how nice it is see where we're headed for this is October of uh, 2008, we're really trying to retest that. This was be the beginning of the <laughs> the kaboom. We hit that again here in 2011, and we're headed right back up there now. So anybody that lived through all of this and and buy and hold, you're starting to become whole now. So it'll be interesting how many people who um, uh, start investing here, start investing here, they're now becoming a whole. Are they exiting their positions? Or are they going to ride it out to actually become profitable? So let's go ahead and take a look at our market leaders. And first up is Apple. And we can just jump right on up there and see, you know, our earnings here for Apple. And you see we are in new skies, 450. Uh, quite impressive. What I'll be watching here on Apple now uh, is this 443 price level. If we break these lows of these three days here, you might see a little pullback. I'm not saying we're going to fill in the gap here. Um, you can see here 4:30. There's there's a little price action going on here. So if we break these wicks here, you might see something back. You can see our point of control here is 4:47. Uh, but overall, certainly we have to say Apple is bullish. Let's move on to Amazon. Amazon, which has been in a downtrend, but as we zoom in here, you can see it's entering this range of 180 up here to about 195. We'll zoom in a little bit more and we can see that it's up here at the top. Now, as we said, Amazon has earnings this week, so uh, we have to be careful. But I would say sideways to up on Amazon, of course, being alert that the earnings are this week. Uh, next, we're going to Google. Of course, Google had earnings last week, and that's where we see this big drop here. And then it's trying to hold up. Now we have this previous line drawn in at 560, and that's basically what we're seeing right here. Also, we see the 200 moving average acting as a little bit of support. So uh, we'll see if it can re enter into this 580 to 620 range. If it can re enter into there, if this 200 moving average will hold up as support, then uh, we'll see this move. Now, on our point, our market profile, we can see we really need to get above 590 if we want to start heading up there to the 720. Goldman Sachs, our financials, um, certainly long term downtrend, but uh, over the last couple uh, months here of January, you can see that it's made its, its move up here. Um, zoom in a little bit more. And we have to start watching 110, which we broke. Next price level we need to watch is 117, and that is our last little swing high right going over here. But this one's definitely, we're going to have to start saying sideways up as we're above the point of control 108 here, sideways up. Uh, IBM. 
I mean, it's kind of going sideways. It's reached the top of its channel here. Um, the last swing high here at 194, it may try to get up there, uh, but I would sit on hands right now and just kind of let it work itself out if it tests this area. Um, but given its history of consolidating, what I'd be looking for is the buy around 180, and I'd be looking for some type of short uh, up here towards the top. Intel's continuing to make new highs here up here at 27, following Apple's reigns, Intel, and all these ultra books. So um, it's trying, finally breaking out. But here's the thing Intel was in this range, and it's finally breaking out. So maybe IBM can break out. Only time will tell, but both of these are definitely sideways up. So we haven't really seen any true down stock yet, have we? MasterCard. Mm. <laughs> Here's our first, at least it's sideways. It was, last week I think we said sideways to down, and I would probably pretty much consider that. We haven't broken this area here, so it's still uh, making lower lows and lower highs. Um, but it really needs to break 340 or 337 here to really make a new new low here. So I'm just going to say sideways on MasterCard. Netflix has found glory again. Certainly not if you're up here at 300. But uh, uh, you can see the range we were in before. Zoom in here. And uh, it had earnings. Nice little jump up here. And what we see is, let's go ahead and draw this in. Draw a price level here, and we can see these wicks all over here. Draw that in right about there. And we can see what we're going to have to watch. That price level is 126. If we get above 126, 127, we can start retesting the uh, 500 and the 200 moving average. But we do notice that it did move sideways for a while. So, um, I don't know what the earnings said, so I can't give you uh, insight off to that. We'll have to look that up. Finally, Priceline, we know about this just a consolidation move. Uh, we told you about this 442. Anybody who bought there, you know, heck, uh, you're almost $100 right there. Zoom a little bit. At this point, we have to start being, being weary of the sellers coming in and pushing it back down. Uh, but definitely sideways on IB. I'm sorry, Priceline. Let's go ahead and take a look at our market sentiment indicators. We're going to start off with the dollar. Now, the market uh, had a very nice January, but let's take a look at the dollar, and we can see that it did not. So we have that inverse relationship being confirmed here. Um, and we have our long line drawn in here at uh, just below 79. So we'll have to see if this is where we hold up. Uh, will the dollar find support here? Um, uh, with the economic uh, uh, indicators coming out this week, we might find you know some catalyst one way or the other. Um, although the FOMC keeps the rates low, um, you know you could kind of tie into that big this big move down here into that. Uh, but with the weak dollar, what does that mean for gold? And you can see gold really has taken off here, hasn't it? And right, if you look in here and see this 1750 range. Look at these wicks in here. That's where the sellers pushed it down. So as we move up here, we have to start watching 1750. If we get to 1750, certainly you can move up to 1800. But this is where sellers found value, so we'll have to watch that there. But gold certainly looks beautiful. And we will finish off with crude oil. And crude oil is back into its range, 96 to 102, just moving sideways. Now certainly at the pump, you know we're pushing 350. Uh, certainly not a great thing, but uh, crude oil definitely just going sideways at this point. As we come to our education spotlight, we see that trading is a complex subject that presents many unusual events that are not found in any books and courses. And what we're talking about here is that, you know, again, this Google psycho trading that I often speak of, where people get on Google looking for the holy grail, looking for this indicator, that indicator, this trading system, that trading system, and that's good. You know, uh, any of us who have gone through college or gone through graduate school, 
you know, I know, uh, you know, when I went for my master's in education after getting my undergraduate degree, and they, they told us all these wonderful things about the classroom. And you get in the classroom, and it's this whole other, you know, experience. A lot of information you can use, but, it, you know, you still have to get that on-the-job training. And training is the same way. There's so much going on. You look for this pattern and that pattern, and combine it with this indicator and that indicator. And that's all well and good. But the market presents different hiccups all the time. Uh, and again, it's about the cost of doing business to learn about those hiccups and learn how to interact and uh, work your way through those hiccups so that you can still be a profitable trader. You have to take the time not only to learn and read about the market, but you have to have, take the time to interact and practice in the market. And that's why we always say open up a virtual account. But keep in mind, virtual accounts, the execution of trades are different than live. And you still have to even after you've done paper trading, virtual trading, you still want, may want to do one contract trading so that you can just get the feel of how your broker in particular uh, handles the fields and the execution of the trades. Please take the time to like, subscribe to our channel, um, give us feedback on things that you're looking for uh, for 2012. Uh, we finally got our you make the stop. Our first videos are going up now, so uh, we really had to work out all of the production. It's not going to be PowerPoints. We actually have, um, you know, chroma key uh, background on background stuff going on there, so that took up a long expected. So make sure you like and subscribe so you can get that information. You know about our free video course on high probability trading, how you can frame the market to make sure you're heading in the right way. We hope that gives you an insight to how we can help you as traders develop that trader's mindset so that you can get that live uh, uh, application on the market and not how to take what we've learned on paper and what we've learned and apply it to real market situations. Uh, we also have our video course. Again, it's only $99, very affordable takes you through everything you need to know, all the introduction, introduction to technical analysis, introduction to chart patterns, um, then it's a whole separate video on trading plan components, and then another video on trading setup. So it gives you all that you need uh, that you'll find in all these two, three thousand dollar systems. But again, we want you to focus on your trader's mindset and get the coaching also. If you're looking for some managed account, make perhaps for diversification, or you want the experts working for you, true full transparency, we work on a plan for you, and we can manage your account using forecast. It's your account. You're giving us authority to trade. It's not some fun. You will not be on American Greed at any point in time. And finally, if you're looking for some charting packets to find those latest grading stocks, we've got that for you too. In the end, it doesn't make a difference. What you find on Google, it matters what you find in your mind to accurately apply book strategies to the real life market moves each and every day. Thanks guys and I'll see you next time.